Hello, it's Mark here from Lightmap. I'm going to show you the updated integration between HDR Light Studio and 3ds Max with the Carbon release of HDR Light Studio. Here we've got a V-Ray scene in 3ds Max and we've got Active Shade uh, selected as the uh, render mode. And there's no lights in this scene, we've just got the shaders uh, for the model and the camera setup. So we're at the point where we want to start to light the shot. So if I go to rendering HDR Light Studio Connection, the panel opens. We've got a tick here that the current renderer is valid, so that's great. And here's where there's a difference in the new connection. We can simply press the start button straight away. And because there isn't an existing dome light set up in the scene that can be connected to, uh, we offer to create a new one for you, create a new hook. Uh, and it's the hook that HDR Light Studio will connect with and will update with the new lighting. So if we just press OK, the V-Ray dome light is made and HDR Light Studio will now start connected to that light. So the startup process is very simple. You'll see when the interface opens for HDR Light Studio, there's been a few changes. The main thing is we now have two render views available. Um, this is the traditional HDR Light Studio's own render view. And then because we're connected to 3ds Max and V-Ray, we have a view here that I'll come on to shortly. So let's go back to the traditional HDR Light Studio render view and press the play button. You're now prompted, because we're connected to 3ds Max, to import the scene. So I'll press import and this will load in the scene. So I'll just change the camera so it fits in the headphones and I'll make the height the same as the width for a square image. And let's change the diffuse color of the model. And now we have a color picker for this, so you can choose any color you like. So if you had a blue product you were lighting, you can choose blue for the diffuse color, uh, which is handy. In this case, I'm going to just pick a very dark gray. And basically, using the render view now is exactly the same as it was before. We can look at the preset lights and we can drag and drop the lights on there. If I move the handle for the light, I've now got it by its edge. So when I click on here and I drag, I have that interactive feedback of moving the light by its edge. So this is a workflow that you'll be familiar with. So if I press the play button over here, where we see the V-Ray logo, HDR Light Studio's connection will actually tell 3ds Max to start Active Shade, and we can now see that image inside of HDR Light Studio's interface. So this makes it a real destination to come and concentrate purely on your lighting with everything you need at hand. So in the same way that you can drag and drop lights into this view and position them using light paint, the same is true in this view. So if I have a little scroll down, I'll get this spotlight and I'll drag that and I'll drop that on the model. You'll actually see that's been updated here very quickly and then 3ds Max is given that image and it updates. And it's more apparent if I solo that light that you can see the light is uh, working correctly inside of V-Ray. So if you wanted, um, you wouldn't need to have this view open at all if you wanted to light your V-Ray shot. Um, at the moment, we've of course got two renderers working at the same time, so in terms of uh, freeing up some resources for V-Ray, closing this view could be great. Uh, one advantage of this view is that you do get this clicking and dragging and the instant feedback, uh, so you can actually discover sweet spots for lighting um, simply by dragging over the surfaces. In terms of, in this view, we support clicks only. And this is because if we supported dragging, there'd be an enormous amount of data being shared between HDR Light Studio and 3ds Max and V-Ray, and it just wouldn't be able to keep up. So uh, we support only clicking in this view to position the lights. So let's say I wanted to close this window and I decided that I can do everything I want in this view, then that's great because that means we've only got one renderer running at a time. And it gives me a bit more space on my interface. So I'll now drag and reorder my interface a bit. 
I'll unsolo that light. I'll turn down the brightness of the backgrounds to very low. And I'll drag and drop a few more lights on. And then if I click in the toolbar, a light is made in the middle and I will then click to move that, to reposition that on the view. And if I want to put a light in the background, I change the light paint mode to rim. I then drag and drop that light onto the view and it updates. So we'll make that dark blue. So as you can see, we don't really need HDR Light Studio's view at all um, in terms of lighting a simple product like this. If we had a very large scene where V-Ray RT was struggling to keep up with the updates, then it would be very advantageous to use HDR Light Studio to get back that fluidity of being able to position the lights. Um, or you can have both of them running at the same time, uh, whichever you choose, basically. So the view also, of course, supports um, area lights. So if I take this light and I promote it to an area light and I use the Smart Dolly slider to bring it in close to the model, you can see that is actually updating. And if I put a, a vertical lock on that light and then scale up the height and the width of that, and I can move the handle also. Now you have all the interactivity that you could possibly need and the advantage of being able to click on the model on the actual render view itself. So there you see I had the rim mode selected. So what I need to do is put reflection mode. And if you ever get stuck with the camera, the light blocking your view, just turn off camera visibility for the area light. Then we can click back on the model. Now we can see it and I can make that visible again if I want. So that's a little tip. If you get an area light between you and your shot, I'll show you again. you can turn off camera visibility and then you can see what you're doing again. And then the usual process to finish lighting, you press the HDR button, you give the file a name and press render. And we'll now render this area light uh, to put on the light in 3ds Max and we'll render the HDR IMAP as well. And now we can simply get Light Studio out of the way, press stop. And now your project is there lit with all the lighting that was created in HDR Light Studio. You've got the dome light we created, it's got the map on, and you've got the area lights with the HDR content mapped onto it. And that's it. And if we start up Active Shade again, you can see that basically everything that we created in Light Studio is there in our 3ds max scene ready to be rendered so thank you for watching we hope you like the improvements in hdr light studio carbon release